listen to the wolves. From the peaceful forest, a disturbance of kings. Nothing is rightfully ours. The monastery's fine crop of sorrel will not be reaped this year. There is hardly one child left in the settlements. Walls with strong foundations have been built against the tall seas that are coming. The thunder of horses across the sunlit heavens, avalanches of ice descending. Deeper than that, newly discovered atoms swerve and weave through restless time, everywhere the wreckage of stars. Listen to the wolves. Their strange music comes on the wind. Splinters of gold fall from their coats. My heart drums against my side. In my dreams lately, I hear voices call for healing. And we'd like to ask um, Kensil to come back and to read his second one, De Rerum Natura, The Nature of Things. I need to say that the heart of this poem is the episturan quality of um, hummingbirds. Nothing so beautiful. Their brightness on the evening air, the sun hurling down spears of color. I have taken up my garden seat to read Lucretius's great poem, Eat White Colonel Almond's Life Awakening on the Shores of Light. Their shimmering and gleam amid the green leaves, flower to flower, flashing incandescent blessings on the wing. Long ago they skimmed the trees, their inch-long skeletons, bound in age-old crystal rock, and still they fly this very day. You cannot cage their fire, they drop and drably die. Their shoulders, Miniature as what gems rotate the hurry of their humming wings. Incomparable intricacies of flight. The sun goes down beneath the sea. Still they fly and shine for me. Their wondrous flight precedes the corn scatter sweep of stars. And those of you, thank you, Kensil. And those of you who are going to read Brandon DeCaris' brilliant introduction will notice that he speaks about the influence of Lucretius, um, newly rediscovered by the world, and his influence on both Ian and on, um, on, on himself. Um, we'd now like to ask Kojo McPherson to come to read The Universe Illustrated by Hubble the telescope. Good evening again. Not usually the sort of poem that I read, but um, I was really taken by the beauty of this piece. The universe illustrated by Hull. Godlike are the great valleys of the sky. The immense and glowing spires of heaven soar upwards in gold and purple masses. Endless voids pricked with starry worlds extend beyond time in marvelous successions of bright stone-encrusted endless abysses. Explosions vast as half of space are frozen in all the colors of a billion sunsets. Cargoes of jewels spill down precipices, collect in heaped and brilliant treasure piles. Fruits of a million stars stain and ripple the sheer sides of green pavilions built on perilous black cliffs above deep seas of blue. Vaulted heavens writhe with cloths of gold, waterfalls of silk, rays of comet tails. Sea shining deserts of cold white ice reflect Mexican gardens of burning yellow blooms. And there is a pool of molasses all a swirl with mercury drops and sumptuous leaves of guilt. Beyond the climb of chasms, rain curtains ascend, and hallways shadowed by tall fretwork arches march in tremendous ranks 
towards the end of time. Out of nothingness, endless purity of white, this came and briefly wakes into being life, beauty, wonder, eternity of dreams, thought, the phantom world of numbers, love even. Sudden blaze of cathedral color, colors in the night. And this walk towards God. What happens next? Thank you, Kojo. Um, I think it's a brilliant poem as well. And we'd like to ask um, uh, Ashley to come back. And this time, Ashley, um, we're going to ask if you'd be willing to read Lullaby again and your, and your second uh, poem, the um, Idea into Word, which is about the creative process. Lullaby. Song sing in memory forever and one day. Fog blowing from the river. I slipped on mossy rocks, slid to the very edge. Danger close to me. The moon lurched, tumbling gold saucer. When my cradle capsized, my mother caught me. Quicksilver heart in hand, steadied myself, safe across all these years. Idea into word. In time's eternal mist, resting between red flowers, green leaves glistening, Carol perched on a flamboyant tree, strange and graceful silhouette, silver water still beneath, sun pierced rain cloud over all, sky dark and honey fall, the gleaming cut and polish of creation, beauty invents the song of words. Delicate and beautiful. Thank you very much. And now we'd like to ask um, Marion, Marion to come back, Marion Bacchus, to read um, one of the, the end of this book. There's a selection called Garden Poems, tiny little fragments, all beautiful. And Marion is going to read one called Rose of Gold. Rose of Gold. Pure gold could not possess this gleam. Sun enters every sovereign bloom. Leaves are dark. Day is dark. These petals pull all gold, all light. To show us all what gold is really like. Thank you so much, Mariam, for that. Lovely. What gold is really like. We can send it to Joe as a thank you. <laughs> um, we'd now like to, uh, well, um, Chantel um, did her two, the beautiful water coconut and, um, and marigolds. And so we're going to ask Jamila to come back now and to do a poem called Zeroic. Still alive at 75, do not wait, illuminate. Put an end to evermore. Lovely thought, nothing thought. No excuse, reduce, reduce. Life store to the core. How you came, leave the same. The enemy is clutter. Everything, throw away. Aim to be completely free. Simplify, zero. <laughs> Ian is doing. The enemy is clutter. <laughs> Zeroic. <laughs> Zeroic up. Thank you. That was beautifully done. Jamila. And now we'd like to ask uh, Ron uh, to come back and to read the poem Legacy. And then we will close with Paloma reading for us Painting the Wind. Reflective of you. Legacy. Our garden grew an old, gnarled orange tree when I was young. Its fruits were sugar-sweet, spent hours in its branchy shade, reading, 
Meanwhile, picking, peeling, sucking fruit, thinking how good life is. Sweet. Shaded from the bright sun, a wind blowing, and the book falling open at beloved passages. I remember the sun's soft, musky warmth, the cool shade, the beautiful sweetness of the oranges, the book on the grass unfurled by my side. I searched the sky for hawks coasting on air, messages on high of strength and grace. It is such a perfect day. Boyhood is summed up. What I speak of is past 60 years and more. So alive I hear the gold wasps buzz, feel the squeezed juice drip upon my fingertips, licked to get the last full drops of sweetness. At every page so good to read and think about, I savor all, then return to savor all again. I did not want their end to come. I did not want the day to end. Nothing is lost. Mind stores up for wondrous use a world of beauty hidden in the head, not to be conveyed from life to life completely, only in this fade and pale of words. This deep pleasure which awakens and gives solace, I would have my sons inherit above all things. But that is a legacy not for me to leave. They will love, imagine, beyond my measure. Me and Angelina are here, but you know, they're only hearing because they're, they, you know, we, we have run out of seats. But just so that you know, Mary, and they're there, so they have audio. <laughs> Paloma to read the closing poem, which is called Painting the Wind. So um, this poem Vanda chose for me to read, and, and it was a really good choice because Ian and I share two great loves, and it's not Mary. <laughs> <laughs> it's Esquibo. I, I really, really love that place, and this poem is about that, um, and it's really lovely. And it's from the new book. It's called Painting the Wind, and it begins with a, a quote from Oris, um, Ars Poetica, and the quote says, Poetry should reproduce the qualities of painting. And this is the, paint, the poem now. The brooding clouds of Essequibo filled with thunder and brewing squalls, lashing rainstorms marching up the river reaches, followed by such calmness in the air. The winds of Essequibo colored by the sun, strongly pushing on the carvings of cloud, how it roughs up the shining coat of evening water. How it makes a green tumult of forest trees. How high birds ride the heavens on it. How it veils the full moon with its silk. Please God, if I am born again an artist, let me go again far up Essequibo and read again the books I have always loved. And this time, Paint the soft and hurtling wind. Before Vanda goes on, I'd just like to say at the end of those readings, I'd like to thank the readers so much. I was, they, they, they have added tremendously to the poems and I'm very grateful to them. Uh, Ron and Paloma, and the, the young poets. Can I thank them all very, very much? <laughs> How wonderful that these young people are growing up with a love of poetry, and I look forward to hearing them many, many times in the future. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>